Welcome back to an episode of Let's Build Twitter. In this episode, we are starting out inside of our Spring Security Configuration class where we configure and define our authentication manager, which is going to be responsible for allowing users to interact with our application. We need this so Spring Security knows where to look for the users at and how to actually authenticate them. Then we go ahead and update the security filter chain to no longer permit all requests to our application and tell Spring Security that we want our session management to be stateless. And finally, we set up our encoders and decoders for our JWT tokens. That way we can use them later on whenever we're creating and rating the JWTs whenever the user logs in. As always, I'm Ethan, or an encoder, a professional technology trainer, and my day job, let's go ahead and hop in straight to development back to our security configuration we need to set up a few things so right now we have a bog standard security configuration we're not really doing anything crazy so the first thing we're going to add is a private final rsa key properties keys and this is going to be auto wired through and at whoops at auto wired maybe struggling today at auto wired public security configuration and then this will take in a keys might want to say rsa key properties keys and then here we'll say this dot keys equal to keys. So we'll go ahead and auto wire that. And we'll see where that comes from in a little bit. So now we're gonna go ahead and create our authentication manager, which is what's going to actually go about creating the authentication for the users. And it uses a custom implementation of our user detail service. So I'm actually also gonna go ahead and say private final user uh, service you serve and i'll also add that into our thing here so i'll say user service you serve we need this to verify our users and such whenever spring security is looking for a user so let's say this dot you serve equal to you serve maybe i should call it full user service but it's fine so that's the first thing we're going to set up is our authentication manager so let's go ahead and do that at bean and we're going to say authentication but sure public authentication manager call it auth manager and this is going to take in a user details service details service guess what that's going to come from our user service we just implemented go ahead and import some of this stuff we'll say dao authentication provider why are we using a dao authentication provider because we're getting the data from a database so we're going to use the dao new dao Authentication provider. And this is how we set up this information without the class that you like override and everything because that is deprecated. Um, there we go. DAO authentication provider is equal to new DAO authentication provider. We're going to say provider.set user details equal to the detail service. We're going to say provider dot set. We're going to say password encoder. And this is going to be password encoder. And we might have actually, no, we called it password encoder. Um, do, do, do. We might have to say password encoder like there. There we go. To finally we return the provider. manager with this provider so this is how you get around the issue of 
Oh, we say new provider manager. This is how you get around the, the issue of not having all of those other um, classes and stuff we have access to previously. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our filter chain to actually work properly. So let's go ahead and go into our security chain. So we're gonna change a few things. So we're gonna say return HTTP dot CSRF. So this again is going to be disabled. So we're gonna say CS rf c whoops let me get rid of that c s r f dot disable we're gonna say dot authorized ht or authorized requests and inside here we're gonna say auth and then we're gonna say auth again and this is going to be slightly different from what I have inside my example because I don't have the H2 console that I'm typically using, but I'm going to say MVC or that I was using for my test MVC matchers to slash auth slash star star. It's going to be dot permit all. So essentially we want to permit them access to our auth routes. We're going to say any request other than that is going to be authenticated. So only permit all to our auth route. And let me double check that I spelled any request and authenticate correctly because it's acting a little weird. I'm not sure why it's acting like that, but okay. We'll deal with it in a little bit. And then we have dot OAuth. We're going to say to research server. Now this one is going to be a little bit strange. There is a method called JWT on the server configurator, and that's what we're going to be calling here with the fancy and with the fancy um, syntactical sugar OAuth two resource server configurer colon colon JWT. So again, I don't know exactly what this is doing. Um, it's setting up some sort of OAuth server. Uh, to use JWTs or manage JWTs or do things along those lines. Next, we have a session management, and this is going to be stateless. That's the whole reason of using JWTs. So session dot session creation policy is going to be session creation policy dot stateless. Then finally, we're going to say dot build. So we need to probably go ahead and import a couple things here and import OAuth 2 server configurer and import this statically. So what it's saying is we want CSRF disabled. We want to authorize or permit all requests to auth so we can authenticate our user and then or authorize a user, I guess. And then after that, we want to authenticate against the user before they use any of our things. And if I wanted to do this to make it look a little bit nicer, I could. And then finally, we set up our OAuth resource server to create JWTs and stuff for us and so on and so forth. We have to do two more things. Firstly, we have to say at bean, and we need to set up a J JWT decoder. So JWT decoder, JWT, decoder so this is so we can for lack of better terms decode or get the information out of the key so let's say return nimbus and that's the api or the the, the library that the oauth server uses jwt decoder dot with public key and we have our keys dot get public key dot build so that will be able to read out the contents essentially of our JWT. We're also gonna have at bean JWT encoder. So this is gonna create our JWTs for us, JWT encoder. So this seems complicated, but this is way less code than setting up 900 different, different filters and things. JWK, JWK equals new RSA key dot builder keys dot get whoops get public key dot private key k 
keys dot get private key dot build I'm proud to import a couple things here JWT encoder uh, RSA key hopefully that's the correct one and then JWK from Nimbus we're gonna say JWK source security context JWKs equals new immutable JWK set new uh, JWK set JWK again for more explanation check out Dan Vega he's the one that showed me how to do this through his videos I'm just kind of reproducing it inside of my own code that way I can do the JWTs like I want and then finally we need to return new Nimbus JWT encoder with the JWKs and import JWT Nimbus JWT encoder. So this is gonna help us be able to set up and create JWTs whenever we need them. Unfortunately, that's gonna be it for today. If you guys enjoyed, please stick around for the next episode by hitting that subscribe button. You'll know exactly when it comes out, especially at that bell icon. If you did enjoy the content today, please sure leave a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, leave a thumbs down. Either way, it helps out with the algorithm all the same. And finally, if you have any suggestions or feedback for me, make sure you leave a comment down below. With that being said, I appreciate you all for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. Peace out, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.